So I figured out, so I figured out the easiest way to explain Jilly Juice and why it has such amazing properties with an amazing outcome if you can handle the healing process. The Jilly Juice protocol activates your prostaglandin hormone, which the men hold in their prostate gland, and it was first found in the semen, and this hormone is found in all of your tissues. And so when you use the Jilly Juice, and you drink the Jilly Juice, whether topically or internally, you are activating the healing hormones that the holistic allopathic industry serve to suppress. And then they glorify the oxytocin. What's oxytocin? Oxytocin is the pleasure hormone. Um, then they take condensed amounts of minerals and they create aggressive antibiotics to suppress the healing process. So when somebody's looking to be pain-free because they had an activation of the prostaglandin hormone because the body wants to heal, when someone is looking for pain-free, they're looking to suppress their healing process. The only way that you would ever legitimately earn pain-free is if you actually regenerate at the micro level, allowing the prostaglandin hormone to do what it needs to do to regenerate at the micro level to where then it translates to the macro level. And then you could potentially never have to revisit that situation again unless there is a new virus in the environment because of a, an aggressive virus because of, uh, who knows, weak people in your world or, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, something catastrophic like a storm upsetting homeostasis. So that's why the Jilly Juice is so under fire is because the allopathic holistic industry don't want to activate the prostaglandin hormone because people don't want to feel pain. But when you suppress that healing hormone with antibiotics, okay, um, that's when you shorten the healing process. So, or shorten, no, shorten your lifespan. Now there is a balance. There's always a balance where, you know, when you are pretty much de-evolved and then you're trying to evolve and yeah, it's painful. It is very painful to heal. It's painful to evolve. So there is a measure or there is a balance to where you can bring in antibiotics if you absolutely have to, because yeah, you, you know, I mean, some people need to have an antibiotic at the 11th hour to stop the antibodies, antibodies from coagulating too much, but that's only a stay of execution. It's only a temporary thing. If you have to use any antibiotic to save your life, that should be the last time you ever use an antibiotic. Because from that point forward, you should be doing the jilly juice and regenerating cells at the micro level so you never have to turn to an antibiotic at the 11th hour ever, ever again. And that means cannabis, that means chemotherapy, that means even taking out organs. If you have to go get an operation, to take out a tumor, to take out um, anything that is dead or that is causing um, malfunctions. It should only be a one-time thing and you should be able to regrow that tissue back and it should never ever be cancerous or malignant. See, right now people are using antibiotics over and over and over again until they completely destroy themselves because they keep suppressing the prostaglandin hormone. So what Jilly Juice does, it activates it, and that's why there is a painful sensation with Jilly Juice because you're actually healing at the micro level. So you're going to wonder why it is that a lot, of, a lot of people are going to pass away from COVID. You know why? Because they're going to take antibiotics, they're going to take uh, painkillers, they're going to take antivirals, and it's going to suppress the healing hormone, and they already came in to, came, uh, to the table with deficiencies and compound predispositions, and they're just going to shorten their lifespan exponentially. So I'm telling you, as I go through my own healing process, bringing up the prostaglandin hormones, it is making logic and seeing the connections that much clearer. I mean, just this morning, just talking about uh, Adam and Eve and how Adam, really the, the male, is the actual healing gender, the male. He is one that holds the healing. He is he holds the key to longevity in humanity. 
The male does. Oh, but you won't see some female over on the left coast, the left and the right coast, talk about how the male holds the key to human longevity. But it is the male. The women are about reproduction and death. But the male, the male holds the key. Okay? You need males in our society because they help create the babies and give you that hormone that people are suppressing with antibiotics, antivirals. And then now, and I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if the females are actually the, the, the weaker version of the males. Okay. And if we stopped suppressing the prostaglandin hormone, would we all become at some point down the road, all male <laughs> where we never die. We never have to reproduce. And we are, ex and then we are taking on characteristics of a very strong human race. Now that's going really way the heff out because I mean, obviously there are characteristics of male and female and, and we have these identifications, but there's a reason there's an evolutionary reason. There is a, uh, yeah, we don't, we, we, we don't want to completely eradicate the females. However, there is, we got to understand how important the males are in our society. We really do. And maybe the war on the male was the downfall. The war on the male and the prostaglandin hormone by suppressing it was the downfall of humanity. So maybe the Bible was correct as far as Eve. Eve was the temptress. Adam was the actual, like, a prototype. And uh, it just went downhill from there. Some pretty heavy stuff. Something to think about. Bye.